Alright, so I've done a few of these chase videos by now, whether it be running from disgruntled soldiers, the creature from it follows, or the world's best tracker, they always seem to be a lot of people's favourite runs. Needless to say, due to their popularity, I am constantly being requested to find more people to run and hide from, and honestly, I'm all for it. One particular request that stood out to me was from Marcus Lundy on Twitter, follow me on Twitter by the way, who suggested I make a video where I'm being pursued by Fisto, the sex bot from the Garrett's questline. As soon as I saw that, I knew what had to be done, so today's the day we figure out, can you beat Fallout New Vegas while being chased by Fisto? As with the previous runs like this, there are only two major rules. First off, as soon as I'm able, I must have the person chase me for the entirety of the playthrough. If they ever manage to catch up with me and engage in dialogue, then the run is over immediately. And as for the second rule, I am not allowed to fast travel at any point during the playthrough, as I could just use it to get away from them if they were getting too close. Now, with all that out of the way, let's begin. Okay, so I kind of messed up my special stats here. I would usually just drain charisma and put it into something else, but for whatever reason, I was under the impression that I would need to have a high enough speech skill to convince Mick later on to get me the holotape that I would need to free Fisto, but you can in fact just buy it instead. What that means is I am left with 10 strength, 9 intelligence, 1 in agility, and everything else is at 5. If I was to change them, I would probably have taken the 4 points of charisma and popped them into endurance for some extra health. It's the same issue again with my tag skills, as while melee weapons and unarmed are right up my alley, speech ended up being something I never used. Finally for traits, I got something right as I took heavy handed and wild wasteland. I then grabbed some useful items around Doc Mitchell's house like stim packs and a knife, before beginning the long jog to freeside. Other than a few coyotes that got a good stabbing, there wasn't much different this time. Okay, well that's a lie, I did go out of my way to use the nearby slide, and was only mildly disappointed in the results. I played Pop-Up Pirate with a few things in Freeside before arriving at the Atomic Wrangler to get things started. As I mentioned before, once I get the quest, I head straight over to Mick at Mick and Ralph's, and pay him 150 caps to build me a holotape that will allow me to get Fisto out of the tube without any problems. I made sure to clear out all the rats in the building with our Fisty friend here, just to make sure that none of them would try to gnaw away at his more exposed areas, shall we say? Side note, I don't believe this would have mattered, as much like Malcolm Holmes, I don't believe anything is hostile towards Fisto. Back on track, after the rats were eliminated, I made sure to stand as far away from the console as I possibly could while I activated it, and then as soon as I was out of the menu, backed off to see how things panned out. As expected, he does indeed follow, and at an alarming rate, I might add. That's all well and good, but I need to make sure that he could actually leave the building, so I ventured outside, and after murdering the grandma gang, waited, and waited, and waited. I was beginning to lose hope that he would ever find his way out of the building, but then, just as I was about to head back inside... <laughs> Alright, so the run is officially a go. He is clearly a lot slower than your average Kowalski. I'd put him closer to Mr. Burke's Michael Myers walk, if anything. One big positive this run has over all the others I've done thus far, is that since recruiting Fisto as part of the quest, I will always be able to see where he is, thanks to the marker on the map. Just to make sure I wouldn't get him mixed up with the other workers, I went and hired Beatrice and Ben for the Garrets, leaving only Fisto as my primary target. I would need 2000 caps to pass the credit check, so I made sure to get the rewards for completing two thirds of the quest, but strangely the Securitrons must have known I was going to come and see them sooner or later, as one of them ambushed me right outside the Atomic Wrangler. I obviously was lacking on funds, so I spent some time harassing the locals into giving up their possessions in a violent manner, in hopes that I could pawn them off to Mick and Ralph for enough caps. This plan worked for a bit, until I got slightly too bloodthirsty and assaulted Fort Elvis. That's not to say the kings killed me, no no, quite the opposite in fact, a few spiked knuckles to the face was more than enough for even the most resilient of the bunch. The only member that gave me any trouble was Rex, unfortunately. The good thing about the kings is that a good number of them carry 10mm submachine guns, which, once prepared to max, can usually sell for just over a thousand caps. After the kings were no more, I of course leave the building, and as I do, I am met with the closest of encounters as Fisto is literally an arm's reach in front of me. As I have done this a few times before, I know by now that when I enter a new zone that it's probably best to head left or right as soon as I go through the door, just in case someone's waiting for me. So luckily, I am able to sidestep the robot and be on my merry way. I had a small bump in the road when I realised that Mick and Ralph won't trade with me anymore due to my low reputation. I could pay the guards to fix it for me, but honestly, there are more than enough merchants in and around Freeside that I don't even bother and instead kill m &R for sport. I opt to just sell my weapons to the gunrunners instead, but rather than head for the strip right away, I end up spending some of the money on a power fist and began making my way towards Nellis. If fast travel is off limits, then I may as well meet the boomers now before I'm tasked with doing so to cut down on backtracking later. Now it would also be the time to bring up that I'm siding with the NCR today. 
simply because out of the chase videos I've already completed for New Vegas, I have sided with House and Yes Man, so I thought I would change things up a bit for today. Yes, that means next time I'm being stalked across the Mojave that I'll be buddying up with Caesar. Nothing out of the ordinary on the journey to the Boomers, but let's just say when I get there that the robot isn't the only one about to do some fisting. Getting past Pearl, Raquel, Loyal and Jack is always easy enough, as fighting them in enclosed spaces limits what they're willing to do with their explosive weaponry. It's getting past the guards at the gate on the way out that causes issues. Running in head first without a plan usually results in me engaging in an impromptu death cartwheel that isn't pleasant at all for my health. Reminding myself that this isn't a weapon restricted run by any means, I switch to one of the many grenade launchers I legally procured and just begin lobbing grenades in their general direction until the game goes ding. Before heading back to the relative safety of Vegas, I make sure to grab the hollow tape from the dead Brotherhood soldier as it means I'll be able to enter the bunker whenever I want and not just when the story decides to let you. Around now I was beginning to think that this would be a straightforward run, but then, all of a sudden, I noticed this. Randomly, Fisto's marker jumped to about 50 feet behind me. Naturally, this being New Vegas, I assumed it would be a glitch, but to be safe I went to have a look and wouldn't you know it, there he was, still sauntering towards me at turtle speed. The run just became very real again as clearly I have no idea what Fisto was capable of, so to avoid getting jump scared I proceeded straight to Freeside's north gate and began all of my business on the strip. First up, as is mostly tradition at this point, was the Omertas inside Gamora. I would love to stay and murder them all, but I was pretty worried that Fisto would just warp onto the strip at any given moment, so after taking out the welcoming party, along with a few others that just happened to get in my way, I left and made my way for the tops. Greeting the chairman with a high part steel coated knuckle sandwich is of course more than enough to get the job done. But considering I am just back from my excursion at Nellis, I made sure to bring a few toys back with me just to be certain I could even the playing field. Crocker is not best pleased with my attempts of diplomacy with the Kings and Boomers. Not that it matters much, as outside of killing a bunch of NCR soldiers, not a whole lot can fail their questline. That pretty much finishes up any and all activities for me on the Strip, other than Mr. House of course, who, much like Benny, does not survive a blast from the missile launcher. Up next on the war crimes agenda is to meet with the Colonel at Hoover Dam. Obviously she will send me to deal with the cannons in the Brotherhood of Steel, so it makes sense for me to get rid of them first to, you guessed it, cut down on backtracking. Before heading to Red Rock Canyon though, I put all of my caps to good use as I purchased some better weapons and armour. Nothing too unusual about the path I take to Red Rock Canyon. For anyone wondering, I run slightly faster outside of my armour than in it, so stripping down to my bare essentials actually holds some advantages. When I run into Cook Cook though, the armour comes back on, although that being said, it probably wasn't very necessary. I channel my inner Leatherface as I prove just how powerful a chainsaw can be in any given situation, not that I haven't done that already mind you. Needless to say, Cook Cook and his misfits really don't stand a chance, and to skip ahead a little, the same can be said for Violet and her pack of friends. To gauge how effective the chainsaw will be on the cans, I stop off in their armory just outside of Red Rock for a test run, and yeah, it cuts them up pretty quick. I essentially just repeat this at the canyon, I just never let go of the right trigger when inside the longhouse, as I just shrug off any attempt at the can's retaliation as their leader and his guards fail to stop me. Oddly enough, after the slaughter I head back outside expecting to be peppered with bullets from all angles, but for whatever reason, they all seem completely oblivious to what just happened. Maybe it has something to do with it being a melee weapon and being considered quiet, or maybe it's because I killed them all so fast, I'm honestly not sure. Anyway, back to what's important, I murder a surprising amount of the cans in their sleep, making me believe that they just can't hear the death warring sounds of my chainsaw. The best part about murdering the cans isn't the sheer amount of easy XP you can get, well I won't lie, it is a little bit, but no, the number of drugs you can obtain is always beneficial for any run from this point on. Most important of all is Turbo in my opinion, but not for the purpose you might think going forward. Now the smart play would be to head back the way I came and double back on my route through Black Mountain to get back to the Hidden Valley Bunker. I however am not very smart, that's no more apparent than the fact I've been playing two worlds for fun the past week. But I digress, that's a story for another time. As for right now, I just continue to head south from my current destination, run into some rather easy to deal with vipers, but more importantly, and concerning, I quickly become surrounded by death claws as I am very close to Quarry Junction. You know, if I am lucky I can get a single VATS attack off with the chainsaw, which will bring them down to a sliver of health, assuming it doesn't crit, and then I can finish them off afterwards with a few more grinds from the chainsaw. However, as I said, that's if I'm lucky enough, more often than not I am tossed around like nothing, as they tear through me like I'm made of wet tissue paper. I am able to find some solace in killing their young, as messed up as that may sound, but it's the little things that make you happy I suppose. This is also what I was referring to when talking about how Turbo would be of a great help. 
Sure, the extra melee attack speed is nice and all, but using it to make a quick getaway from death claws is certainly a lot better, given how badly they outnumber me. Once I reach the outskirts of Sloan, they all begin to back off, thankfully, and from there I can make my way into the bunker. The Brotherhood are often considered the hardest faction to deal with, at least in a semi-genocide route like this. Upon looking back on the footage, I have no idea why I didn't just play along with them and then after disposing of Dobson, just blow them up with a self-destruct sequence. I guess I may have been worried that Fisto would somehow teleport his way into the bunker during the whole process. Not that it's a big issue though, as some psycho medics and whatever alcohol I had on me created a nice mixture of effects that when combined with my insane damage output and armor, made for a very fast slaughter session for the Brotherhood. When I made it to Harden's quarters and dealt with him, I also grabbed his super sledge for good measure and began to use it instead. I understand that the chainsaw ignores armor and is therefore a better weapon, but you see, the Super Sledge and its variants are my favourite weapons in the Fallout series, so any opportunity I get to use them in videos, I am going to take, no matter what. To be frank, it's not much of a downgrade, as one or two swings is still more than enough to take out any of the last scribes or knights who stood in my way. Even though there were no survivors, I still wanted to be thorough as I bombed the base anyway. With that, all that was left was to make my way for Hoover Dam, but on the way there, I ended up getting distracted once more by the siren call of more potential XP and levels. I am of course referring to the centaurs outside of Hidden Valley, along with Tabitha up in Black Mountain. Better yet, Tabitha has another super sledge, so it helps a lot to keep up the durability of my own, given the fact that I completely forgot to buy any weapon repair kits, or think about getting the jury rigging perk this time. With Tabitha out of the way, I follow my route from earlier out the Black Mountain shortcut, and to make things a little more interesting, much like I did with the Malcolm Holmes and Mr. Burke runs, I decide to wait for a few hours. The benefit here is that there's a much lower risk of Fisto surprising me, as I can still see him at all times on the world map. I wait until it gets dark, and when I check my map again, he's managed to make his way just west of the Repcon headquarters, so good for him. Unfortunately for our little friend, I am now going to begin sprinting east towards my story objective. I arrive in Boulder City, one part because it's on the way to the dam, and second part because it's always fun to annoy Kowalski, even when he is in no way tied to the video. I managed to impress Colonel Murr at the dam as I've already fulfilled all of her orders for me before she even gave them, and as such we can move straight on to defending the present. As I leave the building after discussing the situation with Grant, I am greeted by an angry private who is honestly very lucky he was not shot on sight given the fact he rushed in with his weapon drawn. I apologise for my actions, and then continue with the security sweep. I made sure to get both the assassins myself for a change as I slammed the sniper into the ground up in the tower, and then, rather than report the situation, made my way back down and stole the detonator from number 2 and handed it over to Ranger Grant. Sadly, a random soldier died in the process, but at least all of the important NPCs are safe. With that, I report my success to the Colonel one final time, and I am now whisked away to the endgame variant of Hoover Dam. As before, I am pretty sure that Fisto cannot reach me now as the normal entrance to the dam is blocked off, so there isn't much point going over the dam segment in much detail. You will all be happy to know that as is tradition, the game had not crashed a single time up until now, but then of course, right at the end game, it decided to happen on three separate occasions before I even made it to the Legate. Speaking of Lanius, the fight was so fast, here it is in its entirety. Weird that despite how well trained he is in melee combat that he doesn't have the stonewall perk to resist being knocked down. I then use the legged sword for a bit to cut down the last of his men, greet Oliver at the gate, finishing the game and proving yes, you can indeed beat Fallout New Vegas while being chased by Fisto. I think by this point we all know that these chase runs are indeed possible, but that doesn't mean they still aren't requested a whole bunch and I am all for it as they are always a lot of fun to record. Regardless, that's going to be in this challenge video. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider giving the video a like. If you're interested in more challenges in the future, feel free to subscribe. Try to have one of these videos out every week. My name is Norbert. I say everyone, I'll see you all in the next video.